Well, if you were wondering, yeah, that that's the high point of the next hour uh, that we're going to be spending uh, with us there. Uh, and no, this isn't a late night dating show yet, uh, though any more productions like that, and man, you guys will tune in for it. Perfect. Uh, anyway, welcome to Grim After Dark. My name is John. This is the Frontline Gaming Network's weekly interview show where we hit the high points of the last week in the Warhammer community, talk to the best players and content creators from around the world about the one thing we all love, Warhammer. Uh, this week, again, uh, Taylor comes out of hiding again to talk about the craziest book known to man, uh, The Infinite and the Divine, Part 2. Uh, while our recaps are usually all over the place and out there, uh, just as a little heads up, this book is so insane that it actually makes the recap make sense. Uh, for more, look at Exhibit A here. We're going to see <laughs> kind of where we're at already with the book, uh, which is pretty pretty far along. Uh, we're about halfway through there. So a, little, a little more stuff is meant to happen. Uh, I think Val's busy dancing. Perfect. Uh, anyway, my co-host today um, needs some introduction. Uh, he's a terror of the mid-tables and uh, an inspiring overlord. Uh, it's Danny McDevitt. I'm having a blast, <laughs> personally. Yeah, personally. Great vibe this week. Great vibe. <laughs> We're doing oh it, dude. God. I'm feeling it. We're doing it. Uh, the New Orleans Open was this weekend. John Lennon took the Tyrannus to the top spot uh, with the top four that was only half Jakari this time. Um, I guess Danny and Taylor. <laughs> Uh, what was your takeaway of the weekend's action? Uh, uh, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not go gonna ahead. lie. I didn't pay attention at all. I was way too busy. Heck yeah, yeah, I was way too busy, like loading hundreds of jars of pickles onto a table for charity. <laughs> that oh. is true. I did that as well. Yeah, that was that was a fun day. Uh, Danny, what was your takeaway? We were too busy pickling. Uh, I thought that the top eight had some good diversity, and I was happy about seeing that. Although, uh, like after Kari, like I'm really tired of seeing him. Yeah, same. Fair. Throw that army in the trash. They're gone. Um, a Reddit user did <laughs> ask a probing question, and, and I'm going to, Taylor, we should probably explain this uh, before okay. we move on. Uh, there was a charity tournament up here in Alaska last weekend. Uh, we're not going to do any game recaps because certain people here uh, don't like those. Um, where the idea was Everyone. if you donated, if you donated pickles, you got tokens to do with as you wish, and you could cheat during the game. Um, so Taylor, I know we donated about $70 worth of pickles altogether to this. Yep. Uh, we also had little pickle shots, which was a little two ounce energy drink. Uh, we're just a pickle juice shooter. Uh, and I almost threw it right up as, as soon as I uh, touched it. The most disgusting drink known to man. It was disgusting. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Yeah. Have you guys yeah. not yeah. done pickle shots before? Cause they're like delicious. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Uh, the, the worst That's part about wrong. it was it had added energy and protein in it. Uh, what was protein? It? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So much so that it doubles your Danny's. Um, <laughs> so Yikes. a Reddit user asked this probing question. Uh, and while oh, there are I've many answers, <laughs> I want to hear both of your guys takes on it. Uh, we have the CEO of GW has tasked you with picking and designing the next return loyalist Primarch. Who is it and what do they do? Uh, they suggest here shove Ferris into a dreadnought or have Dante and Memphis into a cyan fusion dance. Um, Taylor, as a guest, uh, who would you return and how? So I think Ferris is a good start, but I think the, the best way to do Ferris is to have him be headless uh, on an enormous flaming motorcycle, have him have flaming chained based weaponry and some kind of penance stare. And also he's the Primarch of the Legion of the Damned now. So yeah, he's just, uh, he's just ghostwriter. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Uh, but also please do the con. Um, I, I want the con. The con is, uh, is still alive and he's still my friend. So please bring him back. What if the con was to come back headless? And on fire riding a motorbike. I'm less while excited. Flame based weaponry. Can we still have Ferris also do that? So we have two doing yeah. the same thing. Every loyalist Primarch is now just Ghost Rider. Um, Danny, that sounds awesome. Do you, do you have an idea that's not trash? Oh, yeah, sure. No, I just bring back Lorgar. <laughs> oh, oh, disgusting. Loyalist. The best loyalist Primarch. He's not loyal to anything. <laughs> He's not even loyal to chaos. Yeah, no, he is. No, he's loyal no. to his. He's loyal to his ideas. No, he thinks mm. everything sucks now because he's a little baby man. Yeah, 
He's he's literally the worst thing, uh, worse than horse. He's uh, a very wow. well written baby man. Okay, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Did I miss some kind of a gang up memo here between the two of you? Like, I just want to know. There's like, no yeah. gang up. You just like right. a trash Primark. I mean, that's yeah. that's the thing. I told John before the show that we would tell you that all your opinions are terrible. <laughs> oh, okay. And, yeah, we were gonna we're gonna sabotage Val's computer so that mm-hmm. Taylor had to be on screen. Right. Uh, and then we're gonna let you know. Yeah, we were gonna gang up and everything. It was part of the pickle uh, deal. Space Marine 2 is happening. Uh, the video game awards came, showed some wonderful things. My joy at this news was quickly robbed uh, by the reaction from the community. Um, in case you didn't notice, we, we found out uh, Captain Titus has been demoted to Primaris Lieutenant Titus. Um, and I want to bring out uh, the, the better meme uh, that came from this today, of course, from the ever funny Tabletop Inquirer, which was people suddenly okay with Primaris now. Uh, which I think is the, the best takeaway from this Space Marine 2 thing. Uh, he's being demoted. I'm sure there's storyline reasons for that. Uh, there's also Wait. a small portion of the community. Yes, hold sir. on, hold on, John. Hold on. Yeah, I'd go, like to, who, who's not okay with Primaris? Man. <laughs> Just go to mm-hmm. annoying websites like Daka Daka yeah. and you'll find out. Wait, who? Uh, true. You got me. <laughs> okay. Daka Daka is a forum used by very old men on the internet uh, to get pictures of uh, very small models uh, and, uh, and, and and farm gossip. And they hate everything fun. It is like Yeah, you got me. Danny, you are an old man on the internet. I know for a fact you know what Daka Daka is. To the no, point I know where exactly. You were like, I, know what, hey, I know exactly I, what Daka Daka is. I have an account there. Yeah, once you hit 35, you like are back. 20 years. Up. Yeah. Uh, you had to uh, transfer over from Warseer. Portent, baby. Get it, get it right. <laughs> no, I refuse. <laughs> I refuse to get it right. Man, uh, but we did have a, a very small portion of the community wrote off the game entirely uh, because the lead story writer is a lesbian and a former writer of the RuPaul's Drag Race mobile game. Um, I want to say a couple points on this. One, uh, I want to point out uh, some of Dan Abnett's earliest work was James Bond Jr. Uh, for Marvel. And there's a lovely issue we did where they tried to rescue um, a stuffed bull's head. Um, and I don't really judge his ability to write Warhammer. If that, Danny, you look inquisitive. Yeah, yeah, no. So I just, like, when you mentioned that that uh, mm-hmm. uh, that property, that, that property, uh, all I can think of is the theme song. Are you familiar oh, with that theme song? I am not familiar Do with that, Do yourself a no. treat. There was a cartoon that was made based on that property. Oh, James uh, Bond Jr.? Yes. Yeah. And now I have Just that stuck fantastic. in my head for days. You, you yeah. jerk. Um, uh, for those pointing to her past credentials as a reason that the game will be awful, we've all had bad jobs to do. We've, do, we've done to pay the bills. Some people promote Manscaped Razors uh, on podcasts using promo sure. code Falcon. Others show up once a week to sit on what's been described as the worst overlay in streaming to talk Warhammer. Uh, this true. person made a sh- mobile game. Uh, it happens. Uh, the trailer literally shows a Marine specifically targeting the parts of a Tyranid to give it synapse. Um, shows a Tyranid's breaking and running away. <laughs> They've got oh. it, guys. It's fine. It's going to be good. Uh, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, here we go. Sorry. Moving on. Sorry. What is I... even happening right now? <laughs> the dude is so many... He's... So many good does, things. Does anyone know? <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, I've forgotten how to do. Oh this. my god! Oh, Christ! <laughs> now, if you want your own show, just start back up 40k Stat Center again. That'll never happen. And fair point. <laughs> please, just, please. Um, drama uh, from Henry Cavill uh, as Graham Norton, uh, who is a famed UK talk show host and remembered by some here as only really good as Father Noel Furlong. Uh, belittles Warhammer in a way I could only dream of, uh, poking at Henry Cavill in a playful way until Spider-Man wanted to come play toys with Superman. Uh, but some people were super mad. Um, American professional wrestler and former MMA fighter uh, Shayna Baszler uh, came out and said she was going to murder him, pretty much. Uh, I would imagine in a stage theatrical way. Um, and by the way, this person would murder everyone watching or listening here uh, without even breaking a sweat. Uh, the BBC wrote an article uh, about the I whole thing, which also it. which also led to this. Um, they were looking for people to talk about Warhammer. They oh, kind of no. figure out what it was about. Oh, God. Um, uh, we had someone say, do not engage, brothers. It will be like the Drop Zone Massacre. They could politicize the interview. Why do you think they chose a young woman reporter? 
Uh, guys, people finding out about our little plastic spacemen um, is not a bad thing. I, I sort of like uh, being able to talk to people about it. Danny, do, do you like being able to share your thing or no? Um, well, yeah, of course, John. Uh, I did find that the, I, I, I totally agree that the host uh, did kind of uh, poo-poo Warhammer. I was a little bit disappointed by his reaction there. Mm-hmm. Um, much in the way that most of our community poo-poos, you know, minorities and people of alternate sexual identities. <laughs> so That's fair. That's fair. Uh, big, 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 big opinions. Big if true. Uh, huge. <laughs> thank you. Huge, huge if true. Um, and then Henry Cavill, and well, we can skip past the next couple here. Uh, Henry Cavill actually did an interview uh, today on a podcast uh, saying that if he his dream is to work on Warhammer 40,000 movie or TV show, obviously, but he wouldn't want to do something like just an Inquisitor like Eisenhorn. Danny, thoughts? Uh, man, the head on that guy. I mean, like, look, I'm <laughs> glad that he's excited to talk about. Uh, I'm glad he's excited to talk about Warhammer kind of like in the mainstream. I think he's mm-hmm. definitely got a platform now that he feels like he can exploit, which is awesome. Like you sure. couldn't ask for more, more like more good publicity in that point, um, but dude, yeah, cool. I, I mean, you're built just because you're built like a Greek god doesn't mean you get to play, you know, an, like an actual demigod like on TV. Um, no, look, although it doesn't work out. Good to cast is like Valdor or something like that. I, I, I don't disagree with that. Listen, you don't if, work out if, in a gym four hours a day to go play Eisenhorn. Exactly. Uh, that's like, all I'm going to say. If I'm huge and beautiful, I want to play the huge and beautiful characters that look like weird horsemen. I don't know. Space Marines are cool. <laughs> like Heldane? Is yeah, that what you're talking about? They're specifically or... <laughs> described as equine. I don't want to hear it. Or, or what about if, for example, Henry Cavill played a guy like without a head? Who was on fire riding a motorcycle? Uh, riding a bike oh and had all no. chain based weaponry. Oh, man, <laughs> yeah. we're doing it. Yeah. That's a Do you think his urine is also fire? I feel like that would just kind of track. <laughs> I think you uh, have to fire it off the side of a moving truck to find out. Guys, uh, spell his name. The trailer, the the trailer for Ghost movie. Rider 2 specifically had him peeing his name in fire. Yeah. It was, a, it was a real thing. He also took over a big mining vehicle. It was very cool. <laughs> in in network news uh we are again conforming to the following thumbnail uh from seth the mad duck or, or seth oster from sigmas from the front line and we will not be mentioning him anymore or, or showing any more pictures of him <laughs> just like last week just like last week just like last week and i want to say a big shout out to who put up the video on youtube last week as uh when you hover over it that is the picture that shows and i think that was my favorite thing about that um and we're finally tonight guys cherokee open is coming february 25th through the 27th on the cherokee reservation in the town of cherokee and just a few miles from great smoky mountain national park uh, this is the perfect weekend retreat in an epic resort up in the mountains a uh, the convention center hosting is uh, an entertainment center with a bowling alley uh, arcade multiple bars and restaurants there's a casino so you don't only have to go lose at warhammer you can go lose at poker as well um get discounted kind of rooms by yeah. uh, exactly lose a life uh, with frontline now i uh, get this kind of rooms as, well, <laughs> as part of the frontline gaming room block uh, this will be a 40k championship event and one of the largest events to kick off of the new itc season following the las vegas open in january uh get your tickets today wonderful daddy why don't you introduce our guests and tell us who we're going to be talking to today? Today, today we have Taylor from Taylor. Who? T- Taylor from Taylor. Who? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who. Yeah, I don't know who that is. I'm here now. I haven't yeah. been here the whole time. I'm here now. I'm, I've just arrived. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, perfect. Oh, amazing. And then we're just going to, yeah, Awesome. Magic. Perfect. So, Taylor, we're having you back this week because last week we got about halfway through Infinite and the Divine, which is, again, an amazing book uh, by Robert Wraith. Um, And then we're like, well, it's been an hour and Richard's already uh, uh, sleepy and grumpy. So we should probably come back next week for this. So when we last left our our heroes of Orokin and Trazen, um, (laughs) they were getting their wrists slapped for uh, accidentally genociding a lot of Necrons. Right. So... I feel like I glossed over. I feel like I glossed over that part because I thought that actually happened later. It doesn't. I'm a big dumb. It's like uh, in the middle of the book. It's it is in the middle of the book. Crazy. I, yeah. I, I I like completely forgot. I reread it over the week. 
Uh, but yeah, like, so I feel like it's important to mention that they are fully underwater. The lady yes. uh, homunculus has gills, which is yep. just hilarious. <laughs> uh, and they, the admech side that they kidnap are also like water modified. And he, the, the mechanicus got the kidnap is like, man, I sure do love serving the metal gods, which is the Omnisaya. I love that. That's my favorite. And then, I mean, <laughs> he gets like, you know, hold and dead. It's fine. Um, but yeah, he so changes the, the tape deck on the robots first. It's good. Yeah. He, he, yeah, he has got like, he's got like, a, a big pad and the pad is shaped like the saving screen icon. What's the floppy disk? No, it's the saving screen icon. Right. Anyway. Right. So, yeah, the Triac Praetorians are here, and they're like, well, you guys got, like, 3,000 guys killed, like, permanently killed. You guys know what dying is, right? Like, they did that, but actually for real this time? I know we're not really used to that version, but they're dead. And I, I, I do think that's really interesting, because, like, that's, that's the whole plot of a different book, actually. But, like, only, like, 2,000 of them are dead but they can't make any more, so it's like a serious thing. And yeah. during, and but Travis is also like, I mean, they're not real people. Yeah, no, he <laughs> says they are not legally classified as beings. So you right, might because when they got, <laughs> they got pulled off of this planet into this kind of trial from this council. Um, after last time, of course, they have Ark and surrounded by little time tiles, so that you know, if he tries anything, he'll light up like a little Christmas tree. Mm. The best part was when they were like, you're on trial for murder. And he was like, whoa, whoa, it was whoa. just warriors. They don't count as people. Yeah. We agreed about this. You can charge me for destruction of property, but like, they're not people. Come on. <laughs> so, Lamau got him. Uh, but it turns out But they're out not that... on trial for that. So they're not on it's trial true. for sneaking off or for stealing the thing or for being there. They're, they're, people are upset at them for, for getting rid of all of those Necron bodies under the water, under the planet. But that's not why they're there. Yeah, they said I could. It's fine. Yeah, you guys, you guys said that I could do this. It's okay. Uh, but it turns out that High Metallurgist Quelka, from the beginning of the book, uh, Sorry, like four thousand years ago, Quelka uh, is missing. Has been yeah. has been for the the four K millennia that he's been gone. And he's like, well, you guys are the only ones who'd have been there. So one of you killed him, and Orkin is like, man, if either of us killed him, we already would have ratted each other out. Right. Like we didn't, we didn't blame this. the other guy. Like, I already would have used this against him. Like, come on. I like I that the execution. So the the executioner was like, "Wait, neither of them is trying to throw the other under the bus. Something is very wrong here with what we're <laughs> they, doing." They didn't do it. Um, so the council, which actually doesn't just wait, that might be later. It is later. Uh, the council's like, well, if you guys are going to be such nerds about it, why don't you work together then? And they're like, well, come on, come on. I hate this guy. Are you kidding me? No, you gotta. For the betterment of the Infinite Empire, we're going to force you to to spend at least a fourth of your time for for now and for however long it takes for you to, to figure this thing out. You got to get the corpse. You got you to gotta get into the tomb. You got to get the thing. Because the like, tomb was wow. open, sucked in a bunch of water and fish, but then yes. it closed up, and they're like, okay, guys, we only have, like, 800 years instead of 8,000 years to get True. to this thing again. True. Uh, and they're also on a time limit, because before that happens, the planet will be set for exterminatus. The, uh, Which was the... figured out by math, and not by yeah. magic. As we established right. last week, magic well, is fake. Math is real. Of. They went into a they went into a big guy's head and he was like, I see this happening. It shall come to pass. So, I mean, magic. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's I mean, that guy's a bunch of magic, equations. really. He's called he the Yif Seer. Like, uh, yeah. the guy screams Wait, magic. I'm sorry. Did you say Yif Seer? No, no, I, no, 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 you no, did no. not. Yif sir. With a T. Okay. Not good. Word. However, Ooh. I might, um, we don't know what kind of being it is, though. It could be some kind of anthropomorphic wolf or something. So, Right. All we know is it has a huge head, which is very popular in the the yif circles, I hear. <laughs> I've heard that, too. So they talked to a furry, and the furry was like, look, they're going to blow up this planet I'm on here pretty soon. True. You guys have to find the gates. you got to get into the gate. 
Um, and so they're like, fine, I guess we will. And this is the uh, Orican and Trazian kind of become friends arc. And it's my favorite art of the arc of the book, frankly. Um, so they, so all of the rest of the book, not the rest of the book, but I mean, this part of the book takes place solely on uh, Serenade now. Uh, they don't like jump back and forth. Well, they kind of do. After, oh, also, Quilker, wait, that's later. Got there. My brain is huge. Um, so they go back, right? And they start like researching stuff. And one of the first things that happens is they walk into a cathedral and Trazian it like freaks out and then he goes oh, and man. gets Oric in, and he's yeah. like dude come look at this you gotta come look at this man you gotta come look at this and Oric is like god what I hate these monkeys they're drinking chocolate they use the reproductive system for their waste system that's gross what <laughs> and so they go into this big church and Trazian is like Lamau, look at this and it's like a it's like a stained glass painting of uh, weird looking uh, space marines, and it's just silver the Necrons, skulls. right? It's the Silver Skulls chapter, and he's like, "That's a <laughs> Trazzy's like, that's a weird looking librarian, isn't it? That guy sure does look weird, Oregon. It's just him. <laughs> it's just him with a halo. It's just him. Can we talk about because a... at this point, um, Serenade is uh, being colonized by the imperium so it's now like a human world uh can we talk about the the, the five to six pages that they spend uh watching people drink coffee at a coffee shop yes we can danny no, no never mind uh yes so uh, that's where that's where like ah the waste and gross that's where that comes from um because they're just kind of walking around town just and just soaking it all in it just they do have cloaks like harry potter style invisibility right. they have they have like a thing that like bends reality around them so they basically so that the humans don't like perceive them at all instead of like making them look like stupid human nerds they right. just can't be perceived which is i mean that's the, cool i mean the greatest part for me was when Trazen was like no no they're drinking bean water and orc and he's like i oh, nerd that's stupid why are they doing that why are we wasting <laughs> are time here beans beans i don't know um <laughs> <laughs> that is that was a good impression yeah that's I how like that's that. a, that's that's what orc and the diviner sounds like like for sure um yeah. i was i was there um okay <laughs> the, the orc had made fun of beans beans <laughs> um god okay what happens yeah okay so, so then you go down to like sort of the crypt of the church because yes. there's like a big gas leak and everyone dies when they go down there so like we can hide right. out here it's fine oh but, it's the super mold that's right they have the super yeah. mold that all the miners got because they're poor people um yeah. and so they go down there and orican is like i'm gonna sit in this spot and do a bunch of not magic uh, meditation until I Equations. figure out an answer. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do some mental math. That's what he did. Yeah. Mental math. I'm going to figure out the percentage. Long needed. division. Yes. Yep. Huge. Uh, like years and, of long division. <laughs> and Traz, and Trazian is like, that's cool, man. Whatever. Have fun with your stupid garbage. Uh, and so Orkin like lifts his head back into this and screams, and that's his thing. And then uh, once he's doing that, <laughs> no, that and not and not looking thing. anymore. True. As I'm one our... does when they do math, right? Right. The star <laughs> yeah. The beam shoots out of your body, and then you know mm -hmm. stuff. So after Orokin is like super deep in his meditations, uh, Trazian is like, "Oh, I'm gonna get him!" And he goes and he places a stasis box set for like thirty years to open um, with a gene sealer inside as a joke, you know, as a true, <laughs> like a as, yeah, it's a joke. Yeah, like as a got him. Um, <laughs> And so he straight goes, up got him. man, you think, you think that I wouldn't play a little trick on you? Have a gene stealer. It's, it's <laughs> name is Steve. Um, so he goes back and he kind of like develops a relationship with the librarian, yeah. um, which is kind of hard to read there at the end. Like, I don't know. So he does have to mind shackle all these people, right? So like, like, what was hard to read by the fact that he developed a relationship with his enslaved human that he makes find a replacement to enslave yes. and then murders him? His listen, nephew, in fact. Yes. Listen, he may yeah. have implanted this man with tiny little scarabs that control his brain 
and mm-hmm. enslaved his entire purpose to whatever Trizen wanted to do and killed him in cold blood and didn't want to carry the corpse up the stairs because it's right. gross. And so he made him walk back up the stairs himself. Yes. So he could and, kill him upstairs. And told him that he's a piece of garbage who's destroying the planet. But aside from all that, I thought it was kind of touching. And all, I mean, ah, I don't know. I mean, I he just, was, was nicer touching. to him than, like, you know, you would be to a rat. Right. Right? You didn't... Like, st- it was more like a pet rat. Yeah, you didn't yeah. step on the rat. You just right. put its head in the trap and made it eat the cheese. I don't know. Yeah, the, the or best like part made it was- run a wheel to do something, like keep a light on. Right. I thought it <laughs> was cute. was when he said to the librarian, he was like, I can't promise it'll be painless, but it'll be quick. Yep. And, and I'm like... And- and then he goes upstairs, looks at a picture of his dead wife, and just waits to die for a couple minutes. And then yeah. he does painfully. He has an aneurysm. But, listen, I, Tr- I don't know. had some stuff to do first. Like he had to like organize a book. I thought it was touching. I thought it was a touching mm-hmm. little murder scene. That's what I think. The most touching um, murder of the book, in fact, I would say. I, yeah, I think so. Pretty easily, honestly. <laughs> Very touching murder. Um, yeah. And then, I mean, then he you gets death. Down in the caves, though, yes. Orican, he's doing his math, physical math, uh, physical by the math. way. You can see uh, it. Just no, letting mental. you know. It's, it's not no, it's like mental math, as opposed to physical math, so I'm just proving chat wrong. Well, yeah, physical, physical math, math. As, uh, and I'd just like to point this out, uh, physical math is when you write math on things, like, you know, like you write it down and do the equation, like long division. Yeah. Or or I, whereas mental math is like when you put letters in there and you have to move stuff around. It's no, mad. what? No, you just uh-huh. do it in your head. And then explodes out of your mouth like a light beam. <laughs> John famously <laughs> has never done math. <laughs> Halfway through college, uh, still putting up that three <laughs> math credits that I have to get. Um, but uh, this gene stealer comes out and just uh, starts attacking Orkin. And yeah. Orkin keeps on trying to rewind time, but the guy's too fast for him. Uh, until he rips off his arm and starts, uh, he rips off the gene stealer's arm and starts beating him with it. Well, Necron Cryptex famously only have one attack in combat, mm, so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to rewind time a couple times there to really get it going. Zeus has like five mind, plus. He has two attacks in close combat because he was trained as a wrestler. Oh, that is childhood. true, right? He's <laughs> Little too, too much McDowell. of a too much of a tiny baby to go to mortal school. However, before they flunked him out, they did teach him how to wrestle. Right. which he uses to like body slam and suplex and tear the arm, arm off a gene sealer, which I think if, is pretty If sick. you have a, a Terminator body, you can just do stuff like that. That's right. just part I, of I so may be, a tiny bit of training. I may be old I, and stupid, but by <laughs> God, I have the ability to just tear your limbs off. Because I God do want to point out there were several pages that uh, do cover Oricon going to wrestling camp at a mortal school. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. is not made up. That is yeah, that's no. a part that's, that's of a real thing, thing guys. Yeah, that's that a that real thing. Fun. And that's how he was able to. The G Sealer runs off, by the way. He's like, ah, screw this. I've lost an arm. Using almost that exact terminology, in fact. So it's, it's canon. Um, so yeah, Tanya, the I'm so jealous out. of you. Like, Tanya in the chat says that she's been wrestling, wrestling slept by JT, uh, which is probably the coolest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Yeah. Maybe even better than the video of him in a singlet. So, oh, and that's burned. No, that's moving on. Moving on past JT anyway. the singlet. Yeah, uh, so Orkin goes to Trizen and he's like, you nerd, you sent a gene stealer after me. And Orkin gets to be like, or Trizen gets to be like, hey, if I wanted to kill you, I have hundreds of these things. You think I'm just <laughs> trying to mess with you? Like some kind of practical joke? Listen. That'd be like the greatest joke ever if I did that, but I didn't, or did I'm, I? I'm Trazian, an extreme professional. I would never do that. If I wanted to murder you, I'd put like a bunch in there, you know, come on. It's fine. So before he answers him every time, and I think this is kind of an important note that made me laugh the first time after he asked him, if he tried to kill him, he takes an hour to respond. <laughs> yeah, like, true. He's just like, <laughs> thinking of excuses for an hour. Uh, and then the next time it takes like an entire day. <laughs> like he's just like, it's like, did you kill, did you try to kill a plausible me? story? And he can't. He just can't just, come up with a real story. It's always like some no. really stupid excuse. Just staring at just staring at him for a whole day. <laughs> no, I I didn't do that. Yep. Here's where we put Superman into the Warhammer thing. 
take away the chiseled physique and the good looks. Just have a voice and animated Trazen. Uh, and have it go in real time. So Orkin's Ooh. like, did you try and kill me? They just have an hour-long pause and have Henry <laughs> Kittle say, no. <laughs> I didn't do that. $300 million. I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> I, have, I have no reason. I'm a very nice person. And I'm very efficient. If I wanted you dead, you'd be dead. So you think about that. So this whole time that they're down there, though, Taylor, um, they start, Orkin starts hearing voices. True. He's been kind of hearing this voice for most of the book, actually. Um, but this is the the part where he kind of like fully unlocks it, right? And it's uh, it's when he's in his deep magic trance that's not magic, when he's shooting beams out of his mouth. Um, mm-hmm. Mathematical trance. Falling in love. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. He's falling in love. The uh, creator of the Mysterios, who's, who's, he's, his work he's been trying to follow this entire book, right? Um kind of like reveals herself to him um through the mysterious like she's got a, a program embedded in there that like if you're of such if you're enough of a big brain to figure this out then we can be friends kind of thing um and it's it tells him uh to unlock like his how to unlock his potential because he's gone big magic mode every so often mm-hmm. but he wants Math. to learn how to Right, big math mode, R- nerd rage, math core, math core. There we go. <laughs> he unlocks you. his math core ability um, every so often, but like he wants to do it more. And she's like, "Well, just be emotionally vulnerable. If you just do that, like, <laughs> guys, yeah. the second half of this book is a romantic comedy. Yeah, and two people who don't no. like each other forced to team up. Right. Uh, yeah." He finds his emotional. Uh, well, and it's the key to a, a successful relationship, right? Like an intimate right. relationship is to make yourself emotionally vulnerable, and so he does. Well, yeah. at first he's like, "No, I can't do this. I've been hurt in the past. I, yep. don't, I don't know if I can." <laughs> I've done I've done some <laughs> equations in my past that have really hurt me. <laughs> I trusted someone once, and then my soul was devoured, and I was placed into a giant metal body. <laughs> I've done some. I've I've run some algorithms I'm really not proud of. I don't know if I can open myself up. <laughs> I've run about, through some algorithms in my past. <laughs> like a bunch of them. Like a lot. Like yeah. like an embarrassing amount. Um so eventually she convinces him to like open himself up to the to the to the universe. He's like, no, it's full of garbage. I hate it. it's gross. Uh, and then he ascends, you know, as one does. Um, yeah. But he only captures it for a little bit because the stars aren't right. I mean, you can force it, but if you roll under the turn number. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you roll the Necron arm, right? And it's like. Right. And it's twitching. And is like. This, is this where we did that thing? Is this one of like, is, is this one of yours? Like he holds up the arm to him, and it's like twitching, and they realize that it's twitching in a beat. Right, because the most important thing revealed is like is the number sequence, um, and Trazine is also finding this out at the same time. But there, the there's a number sequence that runs through the entire planet, and everything is affected by it. Uh, the way plants and animals evolve, the way people build mm-hmm. structures, the way the people music. like interact their music exactly like Mm -hmm. all of it is to this sequence uh this exact like sequence of numbers right Um, yeah they're they're they're, when they're walking around they see street theater there's also a part of this book that's dedicated to street theater true um and the most important um, it is they watch the street theater play about like uh that was the three-armed king uh or it was like the the beggar king or something like that uh and yeah the, the song was in the rhythm of the numbers Right. Also, the musician didn't have any legs. That doesn't play any part in the story, but I feel it's important to mention that he didn't have any legs. Yeah. And um, then number sequence, mental math or physical math, depends on who's interpreting the number sequence. I would say uh, both. Nikki D. Yeah. Yeah. It, it can be both. A song can be written down in numbers. I really think it's it depends on how the beam emits personally, but that's just me. Um, that's so, okay. So they follow the, the, the number sequence like signal, right? Mm-hmm. Um and there's been, you know, there's been some murders, there's been some, like, killings and stuff, and it's fine. And so they're walking through uh, the shady parts of town, you mm-hmm. know, watching people, like, scuttle away. 
Um, and Trazian just won't stop talking about all of uh, all of the things he sees, so much so that Orokin just shuts off his ears, which, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, that that just kind of kills me. Yeah. Um, it's like going on vacation to a different country with someone who has read the entire guidebook before going and is busy narrating everything you're seeing the entire time. You're like, buddy, I appreciate the architecture. I don't care that it was made in 1876. I just want to go this way. No, I I, I care, Trezin. Please tell me about the things. I'm pretty um, sure my wife feels that way when we go to the zoo. Oh, yeah? <laughs> It's a real live, specific example. Are there live yeah. dinosaurs at the school? At no, the I zoo? do. I do a lot of narration at the zoo. Awesome. Yeah. Well, about which animal specifically? All every of them? animal. Every animal. Oh, yeah. Which animal you is your favorite? Like stories. Wh- what is my favorite animal? Yeah. Which one? Well, my favorite animal is is the orca, but like oh. I have a lot. I have a lot of animals that I really like. There's some really interesting ones. The fossa cool. is another one of my favorite. Fusa is another one of mm-hmm. my favorite ones. The what? Is that it's, Simba's dad? No, no. <laughs> That's Mufasa. That's Mufasa. That's the same thing. Yeah, you got me. <laughs> no. So we're it's walking the through the sewers. It's evolved into have cat like uh, cat like uh, physi- physiology. It's pretty amazing. Cool. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Cat girl in animal form. But we're walking through the sewers. <sighs> we turned we off our ears. Yes. Uh, Trazen is thinking they they come across a couple dead bodies. Yeah, they're gross. Mm-hmm. Who cares? That man died from getting a pickaxe to the face, and then Orokin does a big like communion with the numbers to find out that the specific way he died to the pickaxe to the face, which I feel is, I mean, whatever. Um, he did like detective mode from Arkham Knight. The old he did. He go. pressed the LB button and emitted the big orange bubble to find out all the lore. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. So. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so they're walking they're walking through the, the the sewers and they come to like uh all of a sudden it's a big bone hall i don't know really honestly how this transition even happens but sewer enormous bone hall and well, uh, they like, kind of go through a crack in the crust like yeah, and like, follow it down and like they uh, like they find like this vault right and right. it's got all these bones with and like skeletons. orcs and people and yeah yeah just all right. kinds of a lot of skulls but things are made out of bones and then they get attacked they do i think it's it's interesting. the build-up i think is a lot of fun because the way it's described i was thinking the whole time personally it was going to be a gene stealer it was like oh yeah, look at sure. yes it's the gsc cult got him spotted yep. uh but no actually it's high middle just quelka as a flayed yep. one uh they're here finally um <laughs> And uh, so yeah, he he bursts out of the shadows and is like, "I'm going to take your skin," but you don't have, I mean, they don't have any skin, so right. Now. Right. Uh, He's wearing a bunch of skulls. Trazian might have some. I mean, if you open up his dimensional pocket, there's probably a bunch of skin in there, but that's gross. And if you open up my dimensional pocket, there's definitely some skin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tyler, I'm going to have to have you uh, uh, like kind of like really localize that bit of audio and send it to me. Um, <laughs> Uh, but no, they did a really good job. Like the author does a great job of misdirecting that it is a gene stealer cult. Because they're like, oh, the 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 poor's are unhappy again. Oh, people are going missing right. in this shady district. Right. Miners are happening. I'm like, oh, it's gene stealers, of course. Oh, it's like oh, spotted claw wounds. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's uh, the high metallurgist who just went insane. You know, John, it reminds me of that book, uh, like Carrion Throne. Is that the one with the Inquisitors? And like, you think it's gene stealers the yeah. whole time? But then it's yes. Correct. Yeah, yep. for sure. That exact book. <laughs> Perfect. So uh, during the walk down, um, Trazian and Orkin kind of have like a buddy moment. Like it's they're like they're they're coming together. They're being friends. Um, mm-hmm. Where Orkin and Trazian are talking about like biotransference, and um, Trazian describes it uh, how of his memory of like being chained and hurled into the fire and stuff like that. And so, kind of maybe because of that. They're growing to be best friends. Um, Orkin makes the choice to save Trazian from the uh, from the flayed one instead of just letting him die. He very easily could have. Like by the time the reactions or whatever, the flayed one is like reaching through uh, Trazian's chest to get his gooey core. Yeah. Um, but Orkin rewinds time and saves him. 
which I thought was fun. I just want yeah. them to be friends so badly, dude. Like I'm pulling, <laughs> I'm pulling for their bromance so hard during this book. Um, and this is the beginning. Um, so, but after, so yeah, they're like, Oh, it's that guy that we were accused of murdering. We didn't do that. Lamau. Um, and so they bring him before the, the scythe lady and the scythe lady is like, well, we're not going to say we're sorry. One, because you suck. And two, <laughs> because the council has been completely disbanded also, right. by the way. Just we're also so turns out each other a bunch again, of like... soulless, power-hungry robots intent on seizing all power that don't work really well together in a group. That doesn't make any sense to me, John. However, for the sake of the book, I will accept it. Fair. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, the, but also she's like, well, I mean, the council's been disbanded and like three of its members are dead and we don't hold any power anymore. However... I've been pulling for you guys to do your secret little project because I think it's cool, and I think only you two nerds can probably do it. I mean, whatever. Um, also, I'll murder you, murder you if I don't. Oh God, what? Yeah, it becomes a heist book. It does. At that point, it's kind of always been a heist book. There's been, <laughs> it's like seven <laughs> different heist arcs in one. Yeah, which I well, think that's is how the heist. Strong. That's how that's how these heist stories work, right? Like. It's always about like these, you know, like this team of people do it, trying to accomplish this task and stealing something. And it's they're constantly trying to one up each other and prove which one is smarter and like who has the better plan. And no, that was actually all part of my plan all along. So on and so forth this entire time. John, how do you feel about that? Um, I just love that every single Black Library book that uh, we have tailored to help describe uh, turns into a heist movie. And it in no way entirely depresses me at all that it's all heist <laughs> movies. Uh, from Black Legion, heist movie, uh, to Talon of Horus, heist movie, uh, to Infinite and the Divine. But uh, Exterminatus Day is coming. Uh, so, <laughs> Exterminatus um, Day is coming. This is not a movie talking point. podcast. We would never talk about movies uh, on this podcast. Um, Exterminatus Day is coming. Uh, so they head back to the planet. It's been hundreds of years. Society's developed. Hey, remember that really cool little street play? Uh, let's let's talk more about the theater of the Imperium. Is this now a giant opera? we got to rewind like two seconds. Because the jump to the conversation with the Slight Lady is like a 60-year jump. And since the Flayed One touched Trazin at all, he's been in quarantine for like 60 years. Yeah, Just... Yeah. Necron's or big germ Just chilling. Right. And Orokin comes in every so often just to make fun of him, which, I mean, that's fun. Um, but yeah, moving to the street play, which is now like a, it's, it's high society. High um, society opera. Orokin is like, why did you even bring me here, dude? And oh, yeah, by the way, they got their own booth at the they opera. They did. Right. Yeah. They, they uh, mind shackled scarabs, some like young nobles or whatever. And just took their booth and like the young nobles are leaned completely back, like staring dead eyed at the ceiling. And these 11 foot behemoths are just like standing completely still in front of <laughs> <laughs> silently watching the screen. They're uh, like, this opera is only like four hours. It turns out also this book shows you that since Necrons are robots and can remember everything, uh, right. Necron plays and operas are like 10 years long. Yeah. Yes, the war, the war in heaven play takes eleven years to fully like play through, um, and Orkin's like, "Well, thank God it's not that." I hate <laughs> operas. It's um, like a docudrama. <laughs> yeah. Gross. So we're watching the opera, uh, and this enchanting young lady comes in and starts singing the song uh, of um, I don't the, know. the name of the planet that I forget. So, something uh, serenade. serenade. The song of serenade. And everyone's well, like, oh, wow, this chick's really good. And Arkin's like, something's fishy here. Why is everyone's brain patterns completely flatlining? That seems strange. What are those gun flashes doing over there? Why is that lady being executed? What's going on? <laughs> it's it's all yeah. those things. It's a, it's a gene stealer time. Yeah. The, the, the back of the opera curtain raises up and a patriarch appears uh, with three arms. It's a three-armed patriarch, at which point Trazen is like, yeah, so remember when you were attacked by a gene stealer? So that was me. <laughs> that was um, actually me, by the way. I'm really sorry about that. It's now an entire planetary cult 
um, I'm sort of the reason that this planet's going to be exterminatist. I'm not sorry, though. I think it, I still think it was funny. <laughs> You're like, God, it, it was pretty funny, though. It right? was a good joke. Like, you can't even really be that mad. Like, come on, man. Like, you're fine. You almost died. We're still here. Like, I mean, I think it's a funny joke. So, yeah, actually, it turns out, uh, double twist, the Gene Sears were actually here the whole time. Yep. When you thought they weren't, but they are. Um, um, got them. Owned Day of Uprising, Plans Generation. And I making. like that double twist because I had totally written off Gene Steelers after that fake out in the middle right. um, with it turning to be a flayed one. Same. Um, yeah. Yep. But yeah, as you know, as all Gene Sealer uprisings are, it's incredibly violent. Uh, millions of people are dying. Um, but the Treasons high... are slowly collecting units off of the table right. as everyone's yeah. dying. It's like, oh, that's that's a cool heavy weapon team, and he just like throws a stasis cube at it. Um, Summer uniform. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Master. That guy is still in his dress uniform. That's sick as hell. Um. So yeah. Okay. So okay. Cool. So the High Admiral gets away because the guy who just, who was executing him decided to shoot him in the chest instead of, like, the back of the head. Which uh, There's no armor there, dude. Like, you can just, you can just blam. It's fine. Um, so he gets away, and he's like, well, guess we're killing the planet, boys! Uh, and so he starts the Exterminatus. And as the Exterminatus is going on, uh, Trazian and Orkin are just walking. Like, they've been walking for, like, three days at this point. They yeah. don't hurry. They have no schedule, I guess. I don't know. Um, and they, they're like, yeah, we got to get to the gate. And so they just kind of tread along. Just the yeah. walk along. And by yeah. the way, chat, you guys really need to appreciate oh. the incredible history 40K mashup joke uh, that was made in the Twitch chat. Or Val will come back yeah. on the screen as the servo skull. Yeah, or we're getting yeah. the servo skull back. So if we get like a ha-ha or a lol. I would really appreciate that. I would really yeah, appreciate that. Am, allowed, am I allowed to? I, I yeah, didn't you're want to interrupt. Yeah. No, no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> That's a reference to John Wilkes Booth after he, he killed Abraham Lincoln in the theater. Six, he said six separate pyramids. Yep. Tyrannus. So there's a double, it's like a double entendre right. there. Thus always to tyrants or thus always to tyrannus. You see what I did there? I did. It's very impressive. You got it. Mom. Yep. You did I it. Would really, I would really appreciate it if everyone didn't appreciate those jokes so that so that this would happen more. I would... Come for the come for the terrible content, stay for the history lessons. That's that's our tagline for the show now. Um, yeah. So we're Ready? walking planet spinning terminatus around it's us. Lord of the Rings. We're, no, we're I, walking, no, the rings. I need Val to tell me about the war eighteen twelve. But yeah, so, <laughs> no. that was your own civil war that was your oh. own civil war cool see it's happening this is awesome i'm um, definitely not pushing this along so val goes to bed before tuesday um, <laughs> they're walking uh we get to fake gate or the the new gate uh the which is one. you know same as the old gate oh gate kind yes do they go back to do they go back to the old gate i think they go to the old gate no. first right yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, they go to the old gate first, and like, man, we sure did kill a bunch of our own people here. Lamau, got him. Um, and okay, yes, they're they're walking down, and as as they dabbed, as I just did, um, Orokin is like, alright, I need that gem now. That gem that you've had on your on your thing, I give it to me. I need it. I need the precious. Need and Trezian's Trezian's like, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? Come on, we're friends now. You don't need to do this. Please don't do this. We are friends now. I mm, come on, man. And Orkin's like, Nah, man. You need to give me the thing. Only one of us can go. And he's like, Come on. What do you mean? Only one of us can go. I was ready for this the whole time. And then the <laughs> ceiling. Hmm? Can we just hold hands and walk through yeah, together? Like exactly. It was Can't yeah. we just be friends? And Orkin's like, No, nah, I'm gonna betray you now. And Orkin's mm -hmm. and Trazian's like, Well, fine. I mean, I was ready for this. I knew this was gonna happen. I still can we still hold hands? No, okay. Uh, and so he just like steals the Mysterios and just zips on out, just teleports away because he's been slamming like teleportation transponders into the wall mm -hmm. the whole time. He's like, well, we don't want to be stuck with the on a way out, Lamau. And uh, as his consciousness is going, he's burning all of them out um, as he passes so Oricon can't follow. And then it I really want to see a visual of this because I see like the little. Do you remember the electric gremlin from Gremlins Two? That's exactly how oh, I imagined uh, oh, uh, Orkin going along here. 
Yeah, it's, I don't know. No, it's exactly like that, in fact. Yeah, I don't think lost everyone on that one. That's okay. <laughs> that's canon. It's a more timely reference to John Wilkes Booth, so that's, that's okay. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, John. <laughs> <laughs> let me make a let me, let me let me make an almost two hundred year old joke, guys. <laughs> this is good, right? <laughs> oh, that's, that's what that's what people come here on Mondays for. Yeah, Sorry, um, so yeah. Go. <laughs> True. Right. So uh, Trazian zips on out, and uh, Orkin is buried in the planet as it's being like obliterated. Yes. And uh, Trazian is also like, well, I mean, I st- again, I plan for this. I have my ship. And so his his ship comes out of the moon where it's been buried there for like four thousand years, yep. and he uh, goes on. A, he's like strafes the uh, the imperial fleet. Not like enough in the movie that they transformers, right? Like That's in the movie the John movie. Wilkes Booth, yes. um, <laughs> right? So he blows. He like destroys a couple ships, mostly just damages them so that they leave, right? And the planet is still mostly destroyed. And then he waits three hundred years. I don't really know why, but I. I uh, um and as he's wait as he's doing all this stuff like he goes to Cadia, he goes to Armageddon, he goes to like all the the famous places as as he does. He's so I almost think that like there's a lot of these giant well giant gaps of time where 300 years here, 1000 years here. And right. I think a lot of that is inserted in to be like, well, you know, like he, you know, the author hands us in is like, well, you know, technically he's in Cadia at this time, so you can't fine, he waits 300 years and then he goes. What about now? He's a busy man who takes a day to respond to even normal conversation. Like he, his schedule is very full. Um, right. right. Clearly, clearly, clearly. So he comes back to the planet, and during that time, he's, <laughs> oh my god, he's wow. like, man, I'm so obsessed with everything all the time. Uh, most of this planet, though, I can't stop thinking about it. It's my favorite thing in the world. I love it so much. Um, as well. So, I mean, I can still hear the Eternity Gate, guys. Like, it's still there. I'm just going to go down there. Um, And so he does. Um, (laughs) So he's, like, floating down between uh, pieces of this cracked planet. And, like, (laughs) each, each, like, layer of history is stacked. I mean, like it is in real life, I guess. Like a layer of strata. Like, it starts with the Imperium stuff. Mm -hmm. And then it gets to, like, the Orc War. And then the Eldar. And then, like, it gets to civilizations and, like, stuff he, like, even he doesn't recognize. Like, because I have no idea what any of this is. I've never seen this stuff anywhere before. Um, and then he gets to the Blackstone Tubes. And he walks down the Blackstone Tube for 30 days. Because he uh, just just loved to walk. Cool. Really. Again, this is how time works in this book. All of a sudden, they drop a sentence. And he walked for a year and a half. And, and then, it's just completely walked, washed by. Yeah, they don't run. They're not hurried people. They're just walking. They're just vibing. Um, so he gets to this like sealed uh, auxiliary gate, but it's not really an auxiliary gate. It's like a gate specifically for when the body was brought through that was meant to be just for that occasion, permanently sealed after that and never touched again. And it's like way more huge and grand and powerful than the other gate because that society was so obsessed with death. And I, I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. Um, yeah. And he, so he's about to open the gate and we all of a sudden Bazinga Orkin is there and Orkin is like destroyed. Like his fingies, <laughs> his fingies are nubs. Uh, he's like yeah. walking on his, on his cane, like an actual old man. He has got no power left. Mm-hmm. Like he's covered in gross dirt and stuff. And Orc and Trazian's like, Lamau, took you like 300 years to get here, huh? And he's like, no, it took 2,231 day, uh, years. Because <laughs> he would dig the wrong way and then have to rewind time and dig a different way. Oh and then he would, God. and sometimes he would get there too late and have to rewind time and dig again. So like his fingers are nubs. And he's just having a horrible time, really. He's just not having a good time. And it's straight now, up not having a good time. No, yeah. no. And anti vibing. Anti vibing. Uh, so he's like, Trezin, for the love of me, I'm God. That's why I said that. Uh, <laughs> don't open the gate, please. You can't be doing this. It's not what you think. And Trezin just calls him a basically a big dumb idiot. 
hits him with his <laughs> stick and then opens the gate anyway. And yeah. when he opens, and when like, he guys, op- we've been doing this for literally 11,000 years. I'm not yes. going to not do the thing. You, you think that you looking like an idiot, by the way, I snapped a picture for my cringe compilation of you, um, looking like all gross and stuff. You think that's going to stop me? No, get whacked. So he whacks him with a stick and then he opens the portal because, um, and like a bunch of seawater like explodes out because the last a time they were there, fish too. yeah, they were, it was open to the ocean, right? So like a lot of the ocean poured in and it comes out and there's like a bunch of, uh, weird evolved fish that, uh, like evolved to live in the tomb work in the tomb complex, which is cool. Um, and then he's like, Lamau, bye, peace out. And he just walks through the portal and leaves Orkin to be like a gross heap on the ground. Um, and then Orkin gets like beyond angry as he does. And mm-hmm. uh, he charges in the portal and they have like a, they have a fight and Trazian just like easily wallops him. Like he's got zero chance. Cause you know, I mean, you know, he's been like unrepaired for like 2000 years. Right. Uh, so Trazian just beats the daylights out of him. Uh, actually kind of literally, uh, like he stomps on him so hard that his jaw shatters and he can't talk anymore. And like his head is bleeding coolant and it's like his heart is open and whatever. And he just leaves him there again. And the whole time Orkin is begging, please don't do the thing that this entire book has been about, been about. I know it's the climax of the story, but you come on, please don't do this. I know you this. feel like you have to do this like because the book like has to have an ending but just right. don't like please don't the book can just, just end here that'd be fine the book the book can just end right here that doesn't. would be okay it does not no. there's like 50 pages left baby guys uh, um, we're gonna go through some of them i, I want to add here really quick uh spoilers uh if you <laughs> if you were enjoying it up until this point great <laughs> go back and read the book uh this last 50 pages uh makes the book totally and it would be awful if someone was to say on facebook or something just tell you hey what about this part right that seems incredibly late john but i appreciate the sentiment <laughs> you're welcome you're welcome the rest of it is yeah yeah <laughs> the, uh, spoiler two, warnings are best two, two hours, hours after we yeah. start reviewing yeah, the yeah, book sure. like well <laughs> We'll put a spoiler warning in now. That's fine. <laughs> awesome. Guys. Guys. Yes. Abraham Lincoln is dead. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? Does this oh, have to God. do with that John Wilkes Booth guy? It was the COVID. Is, is that why it that happened? <laughs> I hear All Abraham the Lincoln serious was... are saying that it's just a fake COVID death. Like, that's what they're yeah. just so the hospital can get its <laughs> yeah. money. Yes, yep. he was shot, but what were his comorbidities? Uh, but anyway, <laughs> he was very tall. <laughs> moving in, moving on. <laughs> inside this vault, inside this big tomb, there's a tesseract yep. vault. Right, but it's not a tesseract vault because my brain is huge, and I'm choosing. Trazian is just like choosing to not look. I simply do not see all the things that tell me this would be a bad idea. Or it's kind of like the, the Looney Tunes where you walk past all the stop, no further, minefields. Don't go right. Don't do this. And Trazin's like, well, I've been cursed by that kind of stuff like a bajillion times. I'm the wor- I'm the universe's greatest grave robber. Like that stuff doesn't affect me. It'll be fine. Right. It'll be I mean, awesome. The Jones, bitch. Exactly. And he uses his big stick to break all the four seals, which are made of uh, some garbage, whatever. I Only think his... it's the same things from the uh, the fifth element. Mm. Oh, true. Love. The seals were that, right yeah, from but love. that's the relationship between Orican and, and and the AI. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. That's why the the lady with the super orange hair and the tight uh, skin suit is in the um, is in the preceding chamber, right? Or yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know how to talk it. right now. Yeah, it's I good. got it. Yeah, yeah. Fifth element is a movie I've definitely seen for sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh okay so cool we've broken all the seals and Trazian's yep. like man i'm the coolest guy in the world i'm the coolest boy in school uh and then uh i'm like crying looking at this perfect body of neckbreath this is so cool i can't wait to be a skin man again and then mm-hmm. the body uh does a uh, undertaker and sits straight up and looks at him and then he takes off his face 
And oh, baby, it's the Deceiver. He's oh, been it's here the, the whole time. time. <laughs> He's just <laughs> messing with them this entire time. Yeah, literally but for 11,000 years, it was the Deceiver just screwing with Orican. Uh, and uh, Trazian. Trazian. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Turns out, 65 million years in the making, it's just been a big joke. Let me out, baby. <laughs> I'm here. I'm the deceiver. I'm the, I'm the coolest. Let me. I don't I, want to be brought. I, I really want to imagine the deceiver laying on that crypt, hearing them coming, and be like, "Oh my god, guys, they're falling for it!" Like, I can't. I can't believe they <laughs> fell for it. Oh my this god, it's gonna be. This is gonna be so <laughs> funny. Oh my god, he just broke the fourth seal. What an idiot! I can't believe <laughs> like, it, guys. It was me, the deceiver, the whole time. By the way, there's a secret Necron army I'm just going to control and murder you with. Um, yep. yeah. Also, I'm like five shards here. Yeah, so he's a transcendent shard of the Deceiver, which please give me that in game, like transcendent yeah, versions no of all, all the Satan we have, like instead of just the generic one. That would be yeah. baller. <laughs> um, uh, I want to thank Tanya, the war match was punked. Yes, yeah, the Deceiver is just Ashton Kutcher. Uh, <laughs> which is an image I want now. Uh, but when the Deceiver I'm comes so to life... Smart. He comes out, he's like, I'm so smart, look at this, and boom, all of the Necrons start attacking people. Um, Trazen kind of uh, pokeballs out a bunch of Necrons to attack the Deceiver, uh, but... Well, Sorry, so, all the all the Necron, like, warriors and shit that were there, uh, are there to stop th this from happening, this, literally this exact scenario from taking place. Uh, so, Orokin wakes, wakes all of the defenses up and stuff, and then they give, then they just blast the Deceiver with all, he's like, man, I haven't seen this much stuff since the war in heaven. And uh, then they shoot the the Deceiver with all of it. And he's like, man, I am literally a star god. I am actually a god of this universe. Like, don't even, come on, man. Nice, like, nice army you have there. It would be a real shame um, if I helped design all of these guys and had override right. codes for literally all of them. Fed on their I, souls. I actually like made you like literally like not not any kind of like metaphorical like I made your body physically so like you get on over here my friend and fight for me um and so yeah it's it's the second big battle time let's go Boom. um except... it's that classic black library third act big battle everything's in there true uh except it's Trazian and Orokin on the same side because they're the best friends they're having a great time and they're best friends forever. That's what I think. Um, Trazen turns himself into ever. eleven versions of himself to, to go and fight across the battlefield. He activates Orkin the surrogates. sits and does math uh, a lot and kind of ready player one can oh like Ender's and, and game they, controls the entire battle from his they separate the heart shaped necklace that they have that like they had to get when they were tied together. Right. Like right. until one half says BF and the other one just says F. Which one do you think got F? I think Oricon for sure. Yeah, I agree. they all got F. I absolutely oh, think it was Oricon. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. <laughs> so the Seaver starts off the fight by just taking like half their army. Um, yep. <laughs> like this is mine now. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna take this. He also starts starts. He does it. There's just a bunch of cool stuff that happens in this fight, like uh, the Deceiver opening up a portal to like the Flare Dimension itself. And yeah. uh, and turning like a hundred immortals just flatly into flayed ones right there. Um, yeah. He like accelerates the the entropy on a bunch of stuff, and they all just turns to dust. Uh, Trazian had a custodian who shows up at this fight. He's not really talked about, but like you see him for a second. I assume he dies horribly, but I mean he's there. That's cool. Um, yeah, like Trazian is just pokeballing this whole here. thing. He's like. Throwing right. out Serenade Guard, he's throwing out Admeg, Necro, like just everything he can throw at people right now. He's just right throwing to the wall. And then he has a fist fight with the Deceiver, and then he has a fist fight with two Deceivers, and then there's a third one. And then man, he loses really badly. Yeah, um, he sure does. <laughs> he sure does. But uh, the way he wins that fight is he uh, was like, well, man, do I have more Tesseract Labyrinths? And uh, here's Scarabs for you, and here's more Gene Stealers for you. Because it went really well last time. And so the yeah. scarabs like disassemble the Satan and the Gene Sealers just roll a bunch of sixes to hit and get uh, get uh, Tesla because he paid two CPs. Because they're Leviathan, of course. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're, of course right. they're Leviathan, right? Um, and they probably uh, they probably fought twice. But yeah, so yeah. kills the Satan 
and then immediately kills Trazian. Trazian jumps to a different body. Uh, oh my god. Okay, how does this look? Oh, right. Got it. Yeah. Uh, Orokin, like, does a super ascend, right? Oh, yep. He sees all the equations, even, even the ones he's not proud of. He does all the maths. And then yeah, he what he does the... is, uh, at the very start of this book, there is a, an Eldari world gem that Trazian's like, this is shiny. I would like this, please. I and love he things that it. shine. Um, and then uh, Orokin literally drinks this gemstone uh, and absorbs the power of a god and becomes a god. Yes. And then he Don't look at me that... like that, Producer Val. That actually happens in the book. He drinks yeah. a gemstone and becomes a, a god. Um, Don't he becomes question it, so... just go with it. Yeah, exactly. He becomes so powerful that he like views the universe the way the Satan view it. And the most overriding thing that he can feel is uh, firstly, just pure hatred all of the time and contempt for everything that isn't him, which tracks. And then the second thing is uh, just an unsatiable hunger. Gotta eat. Very big hungry. Give me your soul. Give me give me a little juice in there. Um, and it scares even Orokin, which I think is cool. Uh, mm-hmm. And so he, mm-hmm. in his super ascended godly form, he goes and he <laughs> just tears the deceiver's face off. <laughs> And then eats the deceiver. Um, Amazing. Yeah, great, awesome. Let's do it. Uh, he has less wounds than a deceiver, so I feel like he <laughs> probably rolled badly on his invulns. Um, Pro I mean, for sure. He, I, I mean, the staff he, of tomorrow does let him fight first, though, and he gets three roll misses. That's true. Yes. But man, that Satan must have had like really bad cause. Only three traits. wounds left, obviously. Yeah, right. Only three I mean, wounds. That's fair, right? We did like, a psychic phase. Sorry, a math phase. And right. then after the math phase and the fight phase, it, it all kind of went down. Um, but after this, Trazin comes in. Uh, he he kind of pocket dimensions all the little pieces. They're all re uh, tesseract vaulted. Everything is kind of cool. I think my favorite thing about this entire book is kind of the wrap up, like the conclusion part, uh, right. where we find that Trazin maybe borrowed one of those Satan shards. Um, and right. Duh. Interviews yeah. it. I mean, yeah. look, Orkin, there was definitely five, as he's literally like stuffing one into a into a thing. There was definitely <laughs> five and not six. You can trust me. It's like pushing I'm the just, foot back in there, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to leave now. Have a good one. Uh, and they vowed to like never come back to the planet. And so the the wrap up, like John said, is like there's he uses the Satan Sean to power uh, Solemnes. And then he like feeds it like little things. Uh, he like shoves it through a hole. And it eats like I think it's like either necrodermis filled with energy or some stuff like that. No, and no, it's no. Like, it's even better. So, so at oh. the end, he's like, "Hey, I want to know stuff." He's right. like, "Why should I tell you anything?" It was like, "I have a tiny little version of you. You can eat that right. tiny version of you if you tell me things." And he's like, "Okay." So he feeds a god to a god, and right. he's like, "What Amazing. do you want to know?" Um, and and Trazen's like, "Tell me <laughs> yeah, about the exception. rift." Right. I want to and go wants, into the rift. He wants to go into the rift, which I thought was like, oh, oh my gosh. So essentially this book is about a man who feeds a god to a god to go into hell to talk to God. So. Right. And hopefully steal Perfect. one. I really hope yeah. he steals Slanesh. Yeah. That'd be dope. Yeah. That'd be that'd be perfect. That'd be good. Mind shackle scarabs and Slanesh. Uh that, that's at least on, go. at least on Fulgrim. Uh, at least, at least, go on. Yeah. yeah, no one wants just, to see that. Just fill no the bugs, dude. To be good. Just fill um, the tiny bug. Danny, I know we're running so long on this, um, but oh god, the final thoughts uh, about Infinite and the Divine. Uh, well, it's one of my favorite forty k novels thus far. Like, I really like the entire. Uh, I like the Necron personality for once. Normally, I was kind of. I've always been a fan, kind of the like the the soulless Necrons, but man, the personalities that they've given these guys are so great. Uh, The author did a really great job of making them come alive and really giving them distinct personalities, but still sort of robotic. I mean, Orican for sure, Trazian a little bit less. He's definitely a little more human Um, or like, you know, human-esque, I guess. I don't know. Uh, Or maybe it's relatability. Yeah, I kind of understand that because he's basically a Warhammer player, (laughs) as we talked about last time. He is. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, awesome. it was awesome. Taylor. I, yeah, I, I mean, I kind of, I don't want to just like flatly echo what Danny said, but yeah, this is one of my favorite 40K books like ever. This book is awesome. 
Uh, I really love the personality and flavor it brings to the Necron race as a whole um, and these characters. And man, I really hope we see more from from this author and on yes. this subject. That would be yeah. that would be awesome. Absolutely. Uh, I'm looking I'm forward good. for I'm, an infinite and the divine too. Sorry, Taylor. Absolutely A plus job. Yes. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Uh Sir Valskull, what did you think of this half of a recap that you saw? Well, I did listen to the previous recap oh, and wow. uh as well as 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 this one. And I thought That's I might tell you guys there was really no reason to say spoilers because I have no idea what happened in the infinite <laughs> the divine. <laughs> Don't have a clue. The spoiler, the spoiler I know. attack comes from. It sounds it being like a deceiver. couple of English. It sounded to me like a couple of English gentlemen took a really long walk, and uh, at the end, a god ate another god. And uh, I think I can go in and read this book, or listen to it, uh, or perhaps um, watch a, a lore podcast show and find out what happened in it. All right. Hell yeah, Perfect. dude! Love it. Good times. Um, so yeah, also, Infinite everyone Divine... I know thinks it's a really great book, and everyone should probably read it because I, I haven't heard so many people really like this. Book. It's a it's a good Xenos book. Like support that, please. More, yeah, please more. For real, yeah. If you guys are sick of uh, bolter porn or nothing but Space Marine battles or Horus Heresy, definitely get the Infinite and the Divine. Uh, it's a very well written Xenos book, which uh, kind of pay, is really well set in the setting. Uh, there's enough touchstones to the Imperium and Gensler cults and Eldari and orcs and just all kinds of great things. Um, the more people who read and hear this book uh, means more of these books get made. Uh, so definitely support that. Uh, we want to hear your thoughts on it too. It is absolutely insane, but I love it. And I think the highlight of this entire episode for me was after six whole months of doing this, someone finally said something nice about this set. So, <laughs> thank you. Val, no, I'm so happy, you guys. Val, like, okay, I wish I had a recording screen right now because out of the corner of my eye, all I saw was, like, some, like punching the air, like, this, something, like yes. <laughs> so, thanks for that, Savage there, Monkey. That means a lot to Val. Um, yeah. It so, wasn't actually Savage Monkey who said that. Oh, was no, oh no, it was Savage Monkey that, that, that thanked him for it. So, someone, mm. oh, it was Player Two. Player Two. It was Player Two. It was the original yeah. Player Two. The second yeah. player of all time. The original ready? Player Two. I'm pretty uh, sure I, it's just Val's alternate account. I, I think I feel like it might be. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. Good times. Uh, but again, thank you so much for, for hanging through for this, this great review. Uh, Danny and I will be back next week. Uh, with a Christmas episode, because we haven't mentioned that yet, and I think it's important to do something special and a little bit different. We don't know what that is yet, but we'll be back next Monday night, 10 p.m. Eastern, uh, right here, wherever it is you might be seeing it. Or if you're listening to a podcast, go listen to some other stuff. I don't know. They're in your house. Uh, <laughs> we Wait, are literally in your house right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. The uh, so for all of that, we will see you uh, next Monday. <laughs>